A few days ago, I shared a video on matrix multiplication, and you all absolutely loved it. But many of you reached out saying, we still don't get how matrices are useful in real life. Can you give us a practical example? Well, challenge accepted. Think about this. Every time you open Netflix, you see a bunch of movies and shows recommended just for you. But have you ever wondered how Netflix knows what you might like? So, in this video, let's talk about how Netflix uses matrices to recommend movies you might enjoy. Netflix primarily uses a combination of collaborative filtering and matrix factorization techniques, like singular value decomposition, for its recommendation algorithm. But to keep things simple, I'll show you a basic version of the same using just a matrix and a bit of not-so-complicated math, so that you can actually see how it works behind the scenes. Let's imagine four friends and call them user 1, user 2, user 3, and user 4, who've watched and rated five movies. Movie 1, movie 2, movie 3, movie 4, and movie 5. They rate movies from 1 to 5 stars, and if they haven't seen a movie, we put a zero. Picture a grid, like a scorecard, where each row is a friend and each column is a movie. Here's what it looks like. User 1 gave Movie 1 4 stars, Movie 2 0 stars, Movie 3 2 stars, Movie 4 5 stars, and Movie 5 0 stars. User 2 gave Movie 1 0, Movie 2 3, Movie 3 0, and so on. This final grid is our matrix, which is just a way to organize all these ratings. Now, suppose user 1 hasn't seen movie 2, which is why we have a zero here. How does Netflix guess what they'd rate it? The trick is to look at friends who have seen movie 2 and figure out which ones have tastes similar to user 1. Netflix does this with something fancy called singular value decomposition. But let's keep it basic and use a simpler idea. We'll compare friends by checking how alike their ratings are. We compare their ratings using a math trick called cosine similarity. Don't worry about the name. I'll show you what it means with numbers. Let me show you cosine similarity in easy terms, and then we will apply it in our example. Imagine three people and their taste in movies. Let us say we have two genres, Action and comedy. We represent their ratings as a 2D vector. Action, comma, comedy. Person A likes a lot of action and some comedy. So rating is 4, 2. Person B rating is 3, 1. And person C rating is 1, 5. Now, obviously, since this example involves only two genres, it is super easy to see just by observation without any maths that person B also likes action more than comedy, but person C like more comedy than action. So person B is more similar to person A, and person C is less similar to person A. But what if this extends to multiple genres and multiple users like we have in our original example? We cannot use observation there, and in that case, we use cosine similarity. Now, if I plot the vectors of the ratings of A, B, and C, A points somewhere here and B points in almost the same direction, but C is nowhere close to A or B. So, cosine similarity doesn't care about how long the arrows are. It only cares about the angle between them. Smaller the angle, higher the similarity. Mathematically, we compute it like this, cosine similarity of any two vectors x and y equals dot product of x and y divided by magnitude of x times magnitude of y. If you don't know what a dot product or magnitude is, I have made an awesome video on vectors, and the link is in the description. First complete this video and watch it later. This thing gives the cause of the angle between vector x and vector y. So, between A and B, it will be this, and between A and C, it will be this. We know that cause value range between minus 1 and 1. Value of 1 means angle between them is 0, 
and thus they point in the exact same direction, or they are very, very similar. Zero means the vectors are at a 90-degree angle and thus are completely unrelated. Minus one means they point in opposite directions and thus they have totally opposite preferences. Okay, enough of cosine similarity. Let us come back to our original example. We'll calculate a similarity score between user one and the others. Let's start with user one and user two. Now you know what to do. The cosine similarity between both of them will be this, which turns out to be 0.553. Now repeat this for user one versus all other pairs. What do you think will be the similarity score of user one versus user one? Yeah, obviously it will be one, because who can be more similar than the person himself? So, user 1's similarity scores with others are this. Similarly, we can compute the similarity between other pair of users and make a 4 cross 4 matrix like this, which we also call as similarity matrix for users. Any value inside it will tell us how similar two users are based on their preferences. Like this row represents user 2, and this column represents user 3. And thus, this value equals the similarity between user 2 and 3. Next, we will try to predict user 1's rating for movie 2. To predict a rating for user 1 on movie 2, we use the weighted average of ratings from similar users. Which other users have rated movie 2? User 2 gave it 3, user 4 gave it 5, user 3 gave it 0 means user 3 didn't watch movie 2. We use only those who rated it, like user 2 and user 4. We take their ratings, multiply by their similarity to user 1, and add them. For user 2, we get 0 0.55 times 3, which is 1.65. For user 4, we get 0 0.6 times 5 is 3. Add 1.65 plus 3 equals 4.65. Now add the similarities. 0 0.55 plus 0 0.6 equals 1.15. Then we divide 4.65 divided by 1.15, which is about 4.04. .04. So user 1 might rate movie 2 around 4 stars. What about movie 5? User 1 hasn't seen it either. User 2 gave it 2. User 3 gave it 3. User 4 gave it 0. So we will use user 2 and user 3. Finally, we get this rating as around 2.5. Now, user 1's rating predictions are movie 2 around 4, movie 5 around 2.5. Netflix would say, watch movie 2, it's a better bet. This is a simple method of how Netflix uses matrices. They start with your ratings, compare you to others, and predict what you'll like all with numbers in a matrix. By the way, in reality, we do not compute this value one by one using hand. Instead, we use a formula that involves computing everything using matrices because it's much faster and efficient, especially when we have millions of users and items. This is how platforms like Netflix, Amazon, and Spotify handle huge amounts of data behind the scenes to recommend movies, products, or songs you might like using matrices. If this video gets 10,000 likes, then I will bring another banger video like this one, where I will show you another amazing real-life use of math that you probably never knew about. If you enjoy my videos and want to support my channel, consider becoming a Patreon, as it helps me create more awesome content for you. Link is in the description. Also, you can support my channel by joining our community and becoming a member. So good.